Tonight at 10, the Forest County Potawatomi is starting a big project that will be giving kids in the community something to get excited about. Plus, after a long career, the Merrill Fire Department thanked one of their own for his service at his retirement party. And Merrill moves towards the sectional finals after an upset win over Mosin tonight. Those highlights and more coming up. Your local news starts now. Your local news, weather, and sports from where you live. News Watch 12 at 10 starts now. Thanks for joining us. One of the largest construction projects ever in a Northwoods County could change the way the community gathers, trains, and learns for decades. The Forest County Potawatomi broke ground on a $60 million community center today that leaders say has been in the works for years. But the tribe made sure to start it in a respectful way. Newswatch host Ian Govan has more. Kids in hard hats asked if they were digging for... The project is expected to create more than 150 construction jobs. The tribe hopes to hold a ribbon cutting for the completed community center in the fall of 2021. Well, Jeff, it looks like some sunshine is back in the forecast after a little bit of cloudy skies today. How's the rest of the week? Yeah, looking? tomorrow and Thursday forecast coming up. Rose. For the last 55 years, Blackwell Job Corps in Forest County helped train disadvantaged students for in-demand jobs. Later this year, Blackwell will shut down. The USDA, which runs the Forest Service Civilian Conservation Centers, announced late last week it will transfer operations to the Labor Department of Labor. The move will mean closing down Blackwell and eight other CCCs across the United States by the end of the year. 16 other centers will stay open under a new contract or partnership. Blackwell opened in 1964 and served about 150 students at a time. All of our questions were referred to the Department of Labor. After 27 years with the department, Merrill Fire Battalion Chief Steve Hintz wrapped up his career today. The celebration marked the ending of one chapter and the beginning of another. He says he's gone through many good times and some tough ones at the station, especially after coming back from a difficult call. Still, he's going to miss what he does. Things aren't as easy when you get to be in, in your mid-50s to do as when you were in your mid-20s when you got hired. You know, strapping an air pack on and crawling around on your hands and knees in a, in a dark room or lifting those patients down um, stairways. Hence, thank the citizens of Merrill for giving him the opportunity to serve in his hometown. University of Wisconsin System President Ray Cross says he feels like he's been kicked in the shins after Republicans who control the legislature's budget committee approved spending $69 million less on UW than Governor Tony Evers proposed. The budget committee voted today to increase funding over two years by $58 million, $45 million of which will only be given after lawmakers approve how UW wants to spend it. Cross says he is really frustrated and disappointed after lawmakers had told him that the UW's budget proposal was reasonable. Cross says the legislature missed an opportunity to meet the future needs of the state. Low state reimbursement can make it difficult for the state to find lawyers for people who can't afford them. Today, a committee working on the state budget approved increasing reimbursement rates for private attorneys who work as state public defenders. The Republican-controlled committee went along with the Democratic Governor Tony Evers' proposal to increase the hourly reimbursement from $40 to $70. Wisconsin current, Wisconsin's current reimbursement rate is the lowest in the whole country. The committee also voted to add 34 assistant district attorney positions across the state. After a number of states placed restrictions on abortions, the Illinois House voted to expand the state's protections on abortions today. The bill introduced by Chicago Democratic Representative Kelly Cassidy was approved 64 to 50. It requires insurance coverage for abortions, contraception and related medical care. Republicans oppose the bill. Republican Representative Avery Bourne called the plan a broad expansion of abortion, saying it makes late-term abortions possible. In light of other states trying to restrict abortions, Kelly says the measure is necessary to protect abortion rights. To our neighbors in Illinois who hear the news around the country and worry that this war on women is coming to Illinois, I say not on my watch. The bill will now move to the Senate for debate.
A big pharma is on trial in Oklahoma over the opioid epidemic. Experts say the trial could provide a roadmap for states and cities wanting to hold drug makers accountable for the opioid epidemic. State attorney Mike Hunter accuses Johnson & Johnson of creating a public nuisance by marketing the extended-use opioid pill, Nusata. As a result, Hunter says thousands of people in Oklahoma die from opioid overdoses. Johnson & Johnson denies the allegations and says the public nuisance accusation is being misused. Communities in need of federal disaster assistance will have to wait a bit longer for it. Two House Republicans today blocked a bill that would have provided more than $19 billion for disaster relief. The money would help states affected by recent hurricanes, flooding, wildfires and other natural disasters. Democrats tried to pass the bill with unanimous consent. They will get another chance to pass the legislation on Thursday. The Senate has already passed the bill and President Trump has said he will sign it. Tornadoes have ripped through Kansas, Missouri and Oklahoma this month. And this week, Ohio got hit hard too. Details after Jeff's full forecast.